Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Welcome to Leisure Suit Larry 6 Shape Up or Slip Out. Now, you guys may notice these little blinking things down there in the bottom right hand corner. Yes, I have gotten a, a version, rather, of the Roland MT32 running in DOSBox because this is the high res version of Leisure Suit Larry 6, which I have never played. Only the low res version, which does work in Scum, but the high res does not. And Roland only worked in Scum and. Blah, 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 blah. So after much to do, I'm not going to leave it there the whole time. I just want you guys to see what it looks like. Um, all five channels of the Roland, and then the R channel, the noise, and then every time it plays a little sound, it'll call up the Q of it. It's just. It's so nice to have. I'm going to leave it running over there to the side. I'm also going to turn these cycles down because it's running much too fast for me. There we go. Memory splat. You see what happened there? This is just so cool to me. I'm going to keep it running over there to the side, but... And then we're going to go back and show the game for real, but... No, 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 let me just go ahead with it. So, here's what's happening. This is Leisure Suit Larry 6, the high-res version, which I didn't even know existed until... Well, right about mm, five minutes ago. And it does look a lot better, though I'm still kind of in love with the more pixely version of Leisure Suit Larry 6. Like, do you remember, um, what was it? Uh, King's Quest 6 also had a low res and a high res version, but I think the only thing that changed were the character portraits. Let's see if this has a sound effect. Nope, just actual channels. Uh, but I've always liked the original. I've always loved the original. So this is the first time I'm going to give this a real chance. Oh, and by the way, Jan Rabson and Neil Ross, this is the talky version. Oh my god, I never thought this existed. I don't think there was ever a, a talky version of the Suit Larry game until 7. So when I discovered that this existed, I tracked it down immediately. And it, it took a while. It took a long while, but I found it. So here it is. Mary Kay Bergman? Oh, Ed Gilbert? Yeah, this has like an all-star cast. Anyway, shh, the game's about to start. I may be a little excited. <laughs> ah, another busy summer day. You decide to wander down to Muscle Beach to work out. Your eyes oogling babes. Um, you also notice that there's only one gal here, so Larry is pretty much a uh, pansexual. Lost in your work, you nearly miss the Hollywood limousine that pulls in behind you. Love that gag. As the limo stops, a beautiful blonde emerges from the sunroof to announce... My name is Shallow, and I'm looking for one very good man. Out of the way, Bob. Let me at her. Move it. To appear on the new TV show, Stallions. Well, I guess you'll have to do. What's your name? My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Oh, hell. Good enough for who it's for. The game is still moving a little bit fast. You can't see all the gags that were on the limo itself. Let me slow it down a little bit more. After a few glorious moments in the back of the limo, in which you act out your favorite scene from No Way Out while Shallow acts out her favorite scene from Ice Station Zebra, you arrive at the studio and are escorted directly to the set where an episode of Stallions is being taped. Now, in the text version, it looks like her name is pronounced is pronounced Shiloh. I think it's S-H-I-L-O-H. Uh. We took the answers you gave us earlier and had our writers heat them up a little bit to make them acceptable to our uh, sophisticated viewers. So when it's your turn to answer, just read your cue cards and you'll be just fine. Uh, but wait, Miss Shallow. I didn't give you any answers earlier. I haven't gone out with these women. In fact, I've never even seen them before. Oh, don't worry, Lasser. Stallion number two is going to lose anyway. Do, do. Places, people. Places. Lights. Playback. In five. Four. 
Three. I just love the setup to this game. They put so much effort into it. Five. From somewhere near Hollywood, California, it's the latest and greatest in embarrassment television. <laughs> Stallions! Today, featuring three hot young fillies from the Mensa chapter of downtown Pasadena. And also featuring two of the hungest stallions we could pry away from Venice Beach. And now, let's all give a big winnie for the star of our show. A big winnie? <laughs> Biff Stiff! Not a crook, as you can see. Drop a contact, all better. Welcome back. You too have a chin butt. Are you related to Davy? Stallion number two is a professional bodybuilder and part time out of work concrete form dismantler who credits his physical success to Herbabite. Let's hear it for Larry Laffer! Stallion number one is also a professional bodybuilder and an apprentice condom sizer who guarantees that around him, women come first. Really slam them together for Rock Hard! As you regular fans know, both of these stallions recently had a dream date with each of our three lovely fillies. Cocktails at sunset, a romantic dinner under the stars, dancing by moonlight, followed by a trip back to the stall for a little heavy breathing. Oops, I'm sorry, I meant heavy breathing. <laughs> and now, let's meet our three little fillies. Philly number one is a nuclear chemist specializing in zero-gravity liquid-fueled propulsion systems who has a mainframe computer right in her very own home. Yes, that's right, she really is a rocket scientist. How about some animal noises for Dr. Sharla Main? I'm having flashbacks to the dating show on Leisure Suit Larry 3, except the music was better. Philly number two also hails from Pasadena, where she leads a think tank specializing in international economics, monetary systems, and currency stabilization. Get it off for Dr. Sharla O'Hara. Are these people all named Sharla? And finally, Philly number three is one hunk of prime horse flesh. With PhDs in marine biology, subatomic nuclear physics, and film studies, a woman who expects more from her man than just intelligent conversation, hoot it up for a while for Dr. Sharla Tan. Yep, all three are named Sharla. All with great degrees, though. What are they doing here? I'm sure you all know the rules, so let's get right to the game. Larry, you're first. Me? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really prepared. Ah, uh, what the hell. Uh, I'll take Greek mythology for $500, Alex. That's about all of this we need to see, isn't it? Let's fast forward. <laughs> yes, please. And we're back with our contestants. Larry, what now? Um, could I buy a vowel, Pat? Yikes, uh -huh. this is not going well. Let's cut to the chase. And the winner of today's show, Rock Hard! Rock and Charla win an all-expense-paid cruise down the lovely Mexican Riviera with stops at Tijuana and Juarez. And our second prize goes to Larry Laffer. Immediately after the show, you'll travel by Studio Limo to the exclusive health spa and resort La Costa Lata, where you'll spend a wonderful two, some expenses paid, weeks. Thanks for watching, folks, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow for another episode of... Stallions! That was incredible. Rock, honey, here's your tickets for the cruise. I'm afraid Charlotte won't be going with you. She opted for the cash payoff instead. But you won't be lonely. I'll be waiting for you in your cabin. Whatever. You come with me, doofus. <laughs> Just be, That's just, laugher. <laughs> the term doofus just still makes me laugh. I'm putting that back into my repertoire. All right, Larry, let's go. Let's get this game moving. Here's your limo, Lasser. Enjoy the ride. Wow, what a cherry 73 pacer. Finally, your luck has changed, Larry. 
two weeks at an exclusive health spa filled with gorgeous women. La Costa Lada, here I come! And here we are as the lovely familiar music begins to play and the Roland MT-32 blinks merrily off screen. Here we are, La Costa Lata, the high resolution talky version of La Costa Lata. Now, let's take a little, let's take this opportunity to talk a little bit. First of all, let's adjust the speed here. That's a little crazy. Hey, Al. Now, just coming off of the heels of Legion Suit Larry 5, what the hell happened? I was a national hero going off to Camp David with the Vice President and Passionate Patty, but now here I am walking leisurely and I was lost on Venice Beach for some reason, looking for a little bit more love. So did things not work out between uh, Larry and Passionate Patty? So many questions to answer. I wonder if the manual goes into any detail. I just now thought of this. Hang on. Well, the game crashed, so I had a chance to take a quick look at the manual and the only reference to Patty at all is a little note from Al down here. It says, in some ways, I've returned to the original. With Larry 6, I wanted to provide an area where the player could roam around and see almost anything within the first few minutes of play and yet provide enough depth of play that the game would uh, challenge most players. No long autopilot cartoon, no passionate patty to provide political correctness, no involved heavy plot, just more babes, more silly situation to humiliate Larry and then more babes, 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 babes. Uh, a collection of audio files are in there somewhere. Ooh, I have to find that. So, that's weird. Yeah, so the entire series basically never happened. There's... Between, I think, 1, 2, and 3 are the only continuous, con like, the continuity episodes, I guess? And then, all the other games from here on out are just standalone episodes. So, everything we knew about Legion Suit Larry, toss it out the window. Here we go. Now, just a quick message about the Roland MT-32, for those who care. I, I did some testing, and... Uh, it doesn't sound quite as good. I think the emulation's a little bit off with this new one that I have, even though it is using the same ROM files, but, uh, it doesn't sound as good as, like, the official soundtrack that you can find on the, the website. I forgot the name of it. I'll, I'll post it somewhere in the, in the dubs. But, it's better than just the standard Sound Blaster. Not by a tremendous amount, but by enough. Uh, Larry, you're right there? That's good. All right, on with the show! Wow, La, Co La Costa Lada. There, I notice something different every time I play this game, and now, because maybe it's because of the high res, I mean, you'll notice that, yeah, we got the eyes and the lips here as the desk. The mouse here is really sensitive, too. Jesus. Um, but we also have these, which are high heels, which I never really noticed before. It was pointed out to me uh, while we were playing the game. And then I just noticed now the, uh, the supports for the desk. Yeah, dongles. And here we go, and just a quick note that I found, uh, Jan Rabson, or Jan Rabson, I'm not sure which one, but he is the voice of Legion Suit Larry in this game. I thought it was only seven, and that's the voice I've been basically emulating throughout the entire series. He does, he is, he, he just, he is Larry, this guy. I'll look up to see what he's done later on. And then Neil Ross, who's just a voice actor extraordinaire, also the narrator in Legion Suit Larry 7. And he is... Outside of Gary Owens, the one of the best game narrators just in the world. I can listen to him say anything. Gary Owens will also be, always be number one, but Neil Ross, close number second, brah. Let's see if there's any other voices in here I know. Marcia Mitzman, I'm not sure. Uh, Cav Varnay, Cav Varnay. Uh, is Mary Kay Bergman, who's his name I recognize. Ed Gilbert sounds familiar. He might just be a Sierra person. Oh, Mary Kay Bergman is also Chardonnay, who we'll talk to in just a moment. Cheryl Bernstein, Ed Gilbert is back. And this is it, version one of the game. 1.0, whoa, 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 whoa. From June 1st, 1994. Love it. Learning. Ah, what the heck. As long as we're getting all the other stuff done, let's take a quick look. Uh, press Control F anytime you feel like fidgeting, which is like the idle in animation, I imagine. Uh, if you have a DAC chip, which I imagine I do, F1, 4, 1, 4, 6, 8, 10. For a surprise. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Appreciate it, but why? I can just do this all day. Love it. And control F will make him fidget. There he goes. I it's like my permanent wedgie button. 
Oh, in the other Aloe games, it talks a little bit about Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist, which I'd love to play at one point. Uh, let's see, just talking about that some more, more Sierra products, blah, blah, blah. All right, enough putting this off. Let's look around. This tacky chain link chandelier is a monument to bad taste. You feel right at home. I, something about his voice, I could just, he could narrate my funeral, and I would still pay attention to it somehow. Alright, I remember this game pretty well, but let's just go ahead and break the monotony up a little bit, because you guys have been very patient with me just bouncing around. The woman behind the front desk is a real knockout. Although you can only see down to her waist, what you see is what you like. And maybe also because it's in the high-res version, well, doesn't matter, we're already at the close-up. Hi! Now, Leisure Suit Larry 6 is also the game I was thinking of earlier, where you can really isolate the various parts of the the body, and it gets really creepy really soon. Like, I can... Oh my god, they're gonna make the narrator read all of this. Oh no. From her wild mane of sandy hair to her bodacious physical attributes, Gammy Boisule is a frighteningly beautiful girl who will try anything once, just for kicks. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> Alright, let's see how specific we can get. Arms! Gammy's slender, slightly tanned arms look yep. good enough to nibble on. In fact, that may be the only thing this lady is missing. Teeth marks. What? Never mind. Look at that voluptuous mouth. Right now, there's nothing in the world you wouldn't give to feel the delicate softness of lips like those pressed urgently against your own. Own what? Please tell me. I don't. I don't want to have to do this with every person we meet. I don't want to talk like the janitor, and it's like, mm, look at his voluptuous lips. You gaze deeply into Gammy's piercing green eyes as you flutter your own lids, as if to say, "Baby, your man has arrived." Stop this. staring at me with that creepy look. Thank you. I can see the whites of your eyes. Okay, well, at least she picked up on it. It's like, don't, don't make me. Uh, <laughs> for the sake of completion, I have to. You seem to be unable to look anywhere else. All right, well, at least she didn't say anything too creepy. Can I mention her earrings? Her earrings are fabulous. Thick waves of flaxen hair caress nope, her cheeks hair. and cascade down her shoulders, leading your eyes to... to... Those delightful pen holders down there. Do you see all this wonderful stationery they have laid out for us? Let's go check it out. From her wild mane. No, I was looking at the stationery. I, I... I don't care. I don't care. Okay. Fine. Our, our pickup and uh, interact buttons have now become separate, talk to, and then of course the ubiquitous zipper icon. Please, sir. Don't you have any other form of identification? Nope, just the birthmark on my, let's talk to you. Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'm here as a guest of Stallions, that famous television show. How do you do, sir? I'm Gammy Boisule, Head of Human Services and Customer Relations here at La Costalada. My job is to make sure your visit here is everything your heart desires. And less. Aw, oh, well done. Well, thank you for that. I suppose we could begin by checking into my room. I do have a room, don't I? Oh, but of course, Mr. Laffer. Stallions has taken care of everything for you. Here's your key. You're in room 201, one of our finest suites right at the top of those stairs, conveniently located near the ice machine, elevator, and kitchen exhaust fan. Yes, good. I always like a little bit of white noise while I'm trying to What's sleep. The price you paid? Sorry, I completely drowned you out. Worth the price I paid, I think is what she said. And yes, hey, key, get. I wonder if it still plays that little yes sound every time you get a point. Like, I would miss it if it didn't. Say, baby, what time do you, uh, get off? <sighs> Usually, right after I get in bed. Oh, uh, uh, what was the question again? Uh-huh. Well, there's a lot of conversation in this game. Since there's not, pretty much the entire game takes place on maybe 20 screens of La Casa Lada. So a lot of it is just character interaction, not in the good way of like getting to know you, but getting to, you know, 
How about we get together later? What do you say? Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Laffer. My life consists of work and exercise. I really don't have time for a romance. Well, that's kind of sad, actually. Hmm. Just work and exercise, huh? What a waste. Hey, no cracks about my waist, okay? <laughs> I can't help it. God knows I've tried to reduce. In fact, that's why I came here to La Costalada in the first place. To fulfill my dream. You have a dream? Uh, Larry, don't be so condescending, you asshole. Would you like to talk about it? Yes, I would. My dream was to work here long enough to afford treatment at La Costa Lada's exclusive cellulite drainage salon. Cellulite, I think. Or is it cellulite? Women came here from eh, around the world to be treated by Dr. Swinebutt. <laughs> but he was so expensive, I could never afford a complete makeover. Mmm, cellulite drainage salon, eh? The plot thickens like so much blubber. Dr. Swinehart, did you say? Who's he? The genius who created La Costa Lada's Cellulite Drainage Salon's marvelous machine. One suck and you were better than new. Don't say it, Larry. Yeah, that's what I always say. Mm -hmm. But alas, shortly after I arrived here, Dr. Swinebutt was sued for malpractice and his Cellulite Drainage Salon shut down. Since then, his magnificent machine has fallen into disrepair. Oh, how I long for those halcyon days. Uh... Okay, well, thanks for waxing poetic with us, Gammy. Uh, anything else you'd like to say? Say, Gam Baby, I've got an idea. Uh, what if I, your friend Larry Laffer, <laughs> could repair this little machine of yours? You know, fix it up, make it right. Wouldn't that make me your friend for life? Or at least one night. Ooh, oh, Larry, if you could do that, I'd be the happiest woman on Earth. And I bet I could make you the happiest man on Earth. All right, there we are. There's our proposition. And it looks like uh, the ding sound for the points has just been replaced with the ding. In the DOS game, it would just be like, oh, yes, which got kind of weird. So I don't really lament its absence, but it is a touch of nostalgia that's gone missing. I'll do my best to fix that machine for you, Gammy. You can count on me. <laughs> At least somewhat. Let me know as soon as you get my wonder machine repaired, Dr. Fix-It. Have I mentioned I've been celibate for years? What's that have to do with anything? Yeah, me too. Uh, by choice? Who cares? Okay, well, uh, we've done our business here. We've been thoroughly creeped out. We've creeped her out, but at least we have our first set of missions. It's almost like you have like a little quest log. Like whenever you see a girl, there's always like a little question mark kind of floating above her head and then exclamation point. Yeah, you know. Now, I don't know because it's a high res version, but the ja the gag is like she's like, hey, no cracks about my waist. And it's like, what the hell does that mean? But Gammy looks good from the top down, but then there's like this sort of area here uh, attached to her legs, which is a little out of control. That workout just won't seem to take care of, which is kind of sad. You don't know that until you get her to come out, but you can kind of see a little bit happening here, maybe? I don't know. Spoilers. Well, maybe for the astute, not spoilers. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costalata logo and the words, Manager's Office, Employees Only. Hey, Al. All right, there's a couple things I know we can do here, just because... Just from memory. Now, Leisure Suit Larry 6 is actually one of the more more, more fun adventure games because it doesn't really hold your hand, but there's not too much you can do to get stuck. I don't think there are any permanent dead ends because there's not too far you can go. There's no point of no returns until like the very end. But uh, yeah, it just encourages you to click on and interact with everything. It's actually uh, one of the better designed um, adventure games, especially a Leisure Suit Larry adventure game. Sticking your hand down into the box filled with room keys, you rattle them all around and have a great little time. <laughs> I like that one. And that's also its way of telling you that, hey, you have this pickup icon as well. Get in there. Rummaging around in this morning's room keys, you grab the one that feels the least sticky. 
Now you have to remember, our room key faces down. The one we picked up goes that away. We don't know why we need that yet, but at least it's in our inventory. And there's a couple other things you can do. You can also pee in the box if you really want to. Go for it. Ah, what a relief. But now all the keys are damp. Not my problem. Hey, all. All right, we'll explore the place later, but first, let's go get settled. That's the first thing I always like to do whenever I go to a hotel, is just go ahead and get all my stuff taken care of. We're right up here. There we go. Never quite figured out this carpet. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. It's... what's the word? Oh, ghastly. This is the key to your room. If you stick it in just the right place, it might do you some good. Thanks for that little piece of subtle innuendo. Oh, I missed Larry's line. There we go. My home away from home. Through your deluxe room's deluxe window, you can see various deluxe parts of this deluxe resort. I wonder how often the Costalata has to be reluxed. I get it. I wonder who had a hand in writing this. Let's see. Uh, about Larry Six. Nope, written solely by Al Lowe this time around, so we don't have any uh, collaborative efforts happening. Oh well. I think I remember a few of the uh, little Easter eggs that we can do in Leisure Suit Larry 6. Let's see if I remember. It has something to do with standing back here. It had something to do with hanging out back here. I don't know. Uh, hi! Think of all the trouble that woman went to just for the chance to look into your room and maybe catch you undressed. Well, I'll have to make sure I'm undressed next time. All right. Well, let's take a look around. I think everything in this room is, well, it's pretty obvious what's interactable. Um, there's oddly no way if you ever would take a daytime nap to put these windows down, which is kind of a, kind of a bother, but oh well. All right, here we are in the restroom. It's kind of a weird perspective. I never quite figured out when I was younger, but you, uh, you're facing the toilet and then you're looking at yourself through the mirror, which is kind of a cool, I kind of like it. Uh, Yuck. brown water. The water coming out of the sink is brown. Well, I guess we we'll have to call housekeeping about that. That's kind of gross. Um, there's a couple fun little Easter eggs you can do in here, but nothing I think we're equipped to do just yet. So we'll do that. We'll do that for funsies later. All right, so first things first. Let's grab everything we need in here. I know we'll need these flowers. There we go. We got those. And read all these cards. That's the also important. The pink telephone services card reads... There we go. So eight long distance, local calls, blah, 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 room service, excursion desk, housekeeping, building maintenance. I think all of these have little Easter eggs attached to them, but nothing important just yet, I don't think. Let's see. Turn down service for our more sophisticated customers. 75 for my room television. Well, we know we got the yeah, television, telephone. We got to do that. The cost of lot is pleased to offer these exclusive services for our more sophisticated customers. Zap away fat in the Electroshock Exercise Center. Dip into our stimulating Euro Mud Pass. Experience the high colonic thrill. Enjoy the day heat of our Swedish sauna. No, Dr. Swinebutt's world famous chili light drainage salon is temporarily closed. Aw, that's sad. Well, you get a point for reading that, which is nice. So we all the new you know, all the places we can visit, the mud baths, the high colonic. Let's I didn't know what a high colonic was when I was a kid, and frankly, I was better off not knowing. And then the sweetest sauna. All of those places we'll visit. Housekeeping, may I help you? This is Larry Laffer. <laughs> yeah, I notice you have something called a turn down service. Is this something I need to request? Usually I have no trouble getting turned down. Uh. Yes, you do, Mr. Laffer. I'll make a note of it. This evening, we leave a little gift for you and your pillow. Oh boy, I love presents. Sweet, all right, turn down service, got. Hmm, I think that's pretty much all we can do in here for the time being. You hear the obnoxiously loud whine of a compressor emanating from somewhere below you near the kitchen. All right, thanks for doing that. I never heard that one before. Interesting. I guess it's one of the benefits of my deluxe room she was mentioning. All right, that's pretty much good for now. So here we are in La Costalada. We're all settled into our room. Our turndown service has been activated and ready to go, just like activating the points on your credit card. Bayungo. So I know this is kind of a slow start. There was a kind of a long intro on this one, and of course I wanted to show off and gush about all the features of the game and uh, the MT32, but I promise next time we will begin again in earnest. But for now... Actually, well, I can't lay down, but good night, jelly beans. Good night.